What's the point of taking music exams? To a certain extent, there is no point, okay? <laughs> Hi, welcome to today's... Oh. oh, the volume is on. Welcome to today's vlog. Excuse the children upstairs for a moment. They're rather excited this morning. Not sure why, probably because the sun's out and it's nice and warm. I have the first of these very special gigs at Audley End House, which is this beautiful uh, English country house and garden, which is about 10 minutes from my house today. Uh, nice afternoon outdoor gig. I'm glad it's outdoor and the weather is like this. So I'll shoot some footage of that for you. We may even live stream it, we'll see what happens. Um, Q&A coming up later on today. But a quick question from Bass Players Guild about cricket, which I'm not gonna answer, but I am gonna stick. A link to some videos by Stephen Fry. Some of you may know of him in the States. Everybody who's English will know Stephen Fry. Some amazing videos that he's done on cricket. Far better than anything I could ever do. Check those out, they'll give you the primer. But I better get myself um, Packed away and ready to head off to this gig. Rather sharpish. Must not forget my soprano reads today. Three gigs and a bounce would not be funny. had a, an enforced absence last year because of the broken finger and missing out a load of summer gigs I've actually really missed them and I'm really looking forward to these gigs today uh, and next week as well I mean next week's a little bit more apprehensive because um, I'm supposed to be playing that John Williams piece as well but yeah it just feels really chilled out a great chance to go out make some music in some beautiful surroundings and <laughs> Yeah, this is a pretty nice venue. <laughs> I just noticed that the battery on the G7X is not massive at the moment. So I'm hoping it holds out to get you some decent footage. Okay, don't need a pass or anything? No. Uh, I need to get quite close. Do you know where you have to No. So the only cab on the block is actually just behind the hedge. Behind the hedge? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Never really was a fan of, um, what was it, Downton Abbey? Kate was, I never was, but this is pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Gig over, really enjoyed it. Knackering last set, just waiting to get out of the main grounds of this place uh, and then head home. First game of the football season to watch. 
Um, but oh, I just need to drink a gallon of water. I have a playing soprano outside. I hey, I need to find a solution. Probably try and see if I can find a clip, a, you know, like the reflector for the tenor. And that makes such a difference because it just means you're not kind of blowing your heart out trying to trying to play. Great result for United, top of the league. Okay, only one game gone, so if you follow football, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Just time for a very, very quick Q&A, and I think I'm only going to get a chance to answer two, possibly three questions. Uh, the first one comes from Steve Cave, who said that he received his Kabula strap uh, in the past week. He thought it was short, but it's perfect and so comfortable. Does the leathers, leather sorry, soften over time and stretch slightly? Mine, ha I don't really know. Mine... I don't think mine has, it, it's been perfect, it's just a, such a great strap, as I said when I, uh, on that video, this hand, um, uh, when I did that thing about saxophone straps, I've had a lot of problems with saxophone straps, the Kabula has solved so many, if not all of them. Now, there was a really good question, Chris asked this in rather a random place, Chris, you were asking it on the uh, video about, that, that I just did a, uh, the drone footage of Fleetwood, but he said, and it's a great question, and I do get asked it a lot, and he says, just wondering what's the point of taking music exams or music tests, because in the USA almost no one tests, I know so many killer players and they never test, uh, I saw one of your vlogs and it intrigued me, um, so... What's the point of taking music exams? To a certain extent, there is no point, okay? Just because you take an exam does not mean you, you've, you're there. I, I have quite a lot of people who say to me, I've passed my grade eight, therefore I can be a professional musician. No, not like that at all. You need grade eight if you want to get into music college, but it does not mean you are a great musician just because you've passed grade eight. But, huge caveat here. Music exams are a great way of maintaining your progress and giving yourself a yardstick by which to measure how you're getting on that's number one that's what i use them with my students is where are you on this scale at the moment in terms of improving and it's about motivation there's a great ted talk if i can find the link i'll link it to you uh, where this guy talks about procrastination i stuck it on the cambridge saxophone facebook page and he talks about how the greatest way to get rid of procrastination is when the deadline monkey starts coming, okay? And if you're taking an exam and you're working towards the deadline of an exam, it's a great way to um, fire up that deadline monkey, which stops you procrastinating, which stops you meandering and wandering. I know I can be like that. Um, I need deadlines. I need deadlines to say to me, you have to get this finished by then. It's very good for, as a yardstick, very good for getting you to practice because it, it works as, um, as I say, an, a way of um, firing up that um, deadline monkey. That's what he calls it, sorry, the Sunday night late gig. The third thing is, it gives you a chance to perform under pressure. Now, the only I have played a little bit of basketball, and I remember we had some uh, basketball players staying with us um, when about twenty odd years ago, and you know they were like fourteen, six foot five. Um, but you know when the, the the is it the foul throw line or the free throw line, whatever it is in basketball, penalty kicks in football. Okay, you can replicate those uh, in the gym, in, on in the training ground, everything else like that, and you, everybody can score penalties. Okay, um, you know kicking a ball in a goal from twelve yards, one guy to beat. It's not that difficult to do. But stick yourself in a World Cup semi-final, um, uh, you know, the NBA finals, whatever it is, or, you know, you need to score that goal in, for your team, and suddenly what goes on in here can defeat you. And what exams are very good at doing is preparing, especially younger people, preparing them to perform under pressure. Because in an exam, it's not about kind of every single note being perfect. It's about delivering a performance. And you cannot replicate that in the practice room or with a camera. It's kind of the same way, one of the reasons I vlog is to make myself better um, at making videos and doing these kind of things and using my communication skills, but hopefully getting better at it because the only way I can do it is by producing it. The only way I get better, and the only way you will get better if you're gonna produce content, is by continually doing it and making yourself hit that upload button, get it out there, you know, do your best, but kind of realize that it's gotta be up there. But, I didn't take a music exam until I was 16. My teacher didn't enter me for any. Partly because we were doing a lot of jazz, and there were no jazz exams at the time. But, I didn't really want to do them at the time, which is fine. If students say to me, I don't really want to do them, I'll try and encourage them to take one at what some points because of the reasons I've outlined, but I'm never gonna pressurize anyone to do one unless they say to me, I wanna become a professional musician, which I'll say, you have to do them. You just, you have to be able to be in that situation where you're 
kind of able to replicate things. It's not the be-all and end-all. That's probably why a lot of killer players, as the questioner says, don't talk about them, never mind, don't, don't take them. You know, for example, just naming off the top of my head, Bramford Marsalis went to Berklee College of Music, um, Chris Potter went to Manhattan School of Music, uh, Joshua Redman was at Harvard for a time, but he was still basically studying, and he was Jerry Redman's son, okay, um, uh, Walter Smith III, Bob Reynolds, all those kind of, um, what's he called, Ben Wendell, all of those players have been to music college, in order to get into music college you have to pass certain exams. It's just the way it is, okay? Well, it certainly is over here in the UK, and I'm sure you have to pass an audition. And it will be a damn sight easier to pass an audition if you've already performed in front of other musicians, because that's another thing that you need to be careful about with exams. When you're performing in front of a, um, a gig crowd, or you're doing a concert for a school or college, or whatever, you're playing in front of a lot of your peers. When you're playing for a music examiner, you're p playing for someone who knows what to listen for. Uh, they've got a very honed critical ear and that's a different kind of pressure different kind of thing which you will get throughout your life and again the more times you do it the easier it gets i hope that answers your question as i say i don't um enter anyone for any us exams i use the associated board in england they are the hardest exams the reason i do that is because i believe that you need to work hard in order to achieve good results and that's where my students have got 100 percent pass rate i've got to admit every time i get that email through from the associated board announcing the results I get a little bit more nervous each time because I know one day someone is going to fail and you know but so far nobody has and say grade 8 100% distinction but that's down to the fact my students do the work um, I'm very fortunate to teach and passionate people and if you've got passionate people it's easy to get those results out of them. Thank you very much for watching. If you don't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Uh, the 3,333rd subscriber, you know if, if I look, it, you know I love my cricket if you're a regular vlog watcher and if you're a new subscriber, I love cricket. And if you're not sure why 3333 is such a special number, go and read up on uh, what's known as Nelson. And I will tell you more. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you very, very soon.